Welcome back to Dog Health News. I'm Roberta Chaitis, and this show is dedicated to a very small dog named Cricket, who flew here on two planes all the way from Virginia. And I want to introduce Margaret Diddy. Nice to have you on the show. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. And your wonderful and brave Cricket. This little chihuahua who weighs something like seven pounds. She has a custom designed dress that we're going to talk about and describe a little bit more. But the reason that Margaret is here is a very special reason because it's the story of a little dog who you loved from the very beginning. So let's start with finding Cricket. And then we'll work through her story. Thank you so much. I wandered into a pet store uh, seven years ago, um, which my husband tells me I should not do. But anyway, I did. And there was this darling little uh, two and a half pound chihuahua. And uh, she looked at me and her little butt got, you know, she got down on her butt and she barked at me. And I said, oh, my God, she is a dream. So the uh, clerk at the store brought me into one of those little um, rooms where you, you know, can visit with your dog mm -hmm. and we got in there and she was just just such personality such spunk she didn't shake like you know chihuahuas do and she was just absolutely adorable just two and a half pounds of cuteness mm -hmm. so she pretty much had me at wolf's so i called my husband up and begged him to she was my present for the entire year he didn't have to get me anything else and so he finally caved and um so i brought my cricket home and the sweetest face in the world. This is a, I've spent the whole day with you yesterday, and I am in love. <laughs> so she was pretty much of a healthy dog mm -hmm. until when? What happened, Margaret? Um, about October of last year, uh, my husband started seeing some stiffness in her legs, um, shaking her head a lot. Um, and so he thought, maybe she's getting diabetes. And so he brought her in or an ear infection, and he brought her in, and the vet just said, oh, it's a, it could be a middle ear infection, gave her some antibiotics, and said, use as needed. So you started off with an ear, ear possibly infection. an ear infection. Okay. Yeah, and then um, we brought her back in to another vet, and she said, oh, it could be a liver shunt problem, and you know which could be fatal, and that ended up not being that. Finally, we brought her into a vet. Now, these are months later, another vet, in January, uh, uh, very at tail end of January to Dr. Elliott of Akerdale Animal Hospital in um, Virginia Beach, mm -hmm. and he was astute enough to say, you know what, this dog's got some neurological problems. You need to get her into a canine neuro neurologist ASAP, which we did, mm -hmm. and that was in February. Um, so on February 3rd, we drove up to Richmond, Virginia, and met with uh, Bush Animal uh, Services, and they're a neurological group. And then we met with Dr. Higginbotham, and who said, uh, yeah, after he did her examination, we got some neuro neurological problems. We need to go ahead and do an MRI and uh, uh, possibly a spinal tap. Now, this dog weighs or weighed around five pounds at the time. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what she, I mean, our audience should only know what this, is, what this means for a little dog to go through these tests. Yeah, especially a spinal tap, um, which I came to find out that uh, she could not have a spinal tap because she has a Chiara-like malformation in her brain. So they um, came back that day. They sent us out for a couple hours. They went ahead and did the, the MRI, and um, they couldn't do the spinal tap because of that malformation. And Dr. Higginbotham, who is her neurologist at Bush Animal uh, Services, uh, looked really grim, and he came out, and he said, you know, I got some bad news for you. And so my husband and I are like, like what? What could be so bad? And he um, said, she's got GME, um, but it's... And that's GME, mm -hmm. or the three initials. For granulom... To... I have such a hard time saying this. Granulom... Tis meningocephalitis, exactly. just it's a mouthful. Um, but it's uh, morphed into enemy, which is the necroticizing, you know, necrosis basically of the brain, where the white cells are eating brain matter, and it's not differentiating any type of brain matter. It just says virus, doesn't know which one it is, and it just says, let me just eat the brain. 
So I said, oh, great. And he looked really grim. He said, I have to hospitalize this dog. If not, she's just not going to make it. I need to give her immediate uh, chemo treatment and uh, put her on a high dose of Pred. Um, so, yeah. So we're like, okay, well, we want to save our little dog. And um, so he kept her overnight and did that. And we brought her home from mm -hmm. there. And since then, it's just been... It's treatment. definitely been one thing after, after the next another. thing. And I know I've, even though I've heard this story before, because of our relationship, every time I hear it, I'm just in awe of what you had to go through to just find out what the result was. And I think that's where I want to start talking about the symptoms and what, what people really need to look out for if, if something's wrong with their dog. Well, yeah, I mean, you, sh you need to really focus in on your dog's behavior. You need to know your dog, obviously, um, the signs and symptoms. And you can have a couple of them, or you can have all of them. You might not have them all, but you might have a combination of them, which is blindness, drowsiness, circling, seizures, weakness of the hind legs, or all four of the legs at the same time. Um, and then you have this constant head pressing, like Cricket would take her little part of her face and just press it up to my nose and my chin. And uh, that was odd behavior for her. I thought she was being affectionate, but it wasn't affection. It was, listen, my head hurts, mommy. And so she would press it up against me. Mm -hmm. So these are, you know, like I said, you can have some of these to together or you can possibly have all of them. And some of the bigger dogs, because bigger dogs can get this as disease well. as mm -hmm. well, they will actually push their head against a wall. So that's something to look at because they're trying to get relief mm -hmm. from the pain. Well, yeah. I mean, Dr. Becker in they her had. own video said that she um, uh, felt that they had constant migraines. And I would imagine, I mean, if you've got this, something like this neurologically going on in your brain where your white cells are eating your, your, your brain matter, you, you've got it, to have really, pounding headaches. Really. Which brings us to the, 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 the expenses that go along with this. And I'm just going to show our audience a pamphlet here of bills. My We're God. not going to go through this, but when I took a look at what you have spent in order to get from point A, what is wrong with my dog, to we know what's wrong with this dog, I mean, anything from $15 to $42 to an MRI for $1,800. These things add up. Yep. And some people just can't handle it because dog health insurance sometimes doesn't cover it. How did, how did, how did you handle it? My husband and I always put money aside for her vaccinations and her well checkup. So, I mean, we, we felt we didn't need pet insurance because we were good savers. Um, we had no idea that a dog could be affected this drastically by any type of disease um, and that the monumental amount of money that they charge you. Mm -hmm. um, we handled it by, we used our tax refund. We also did open up a care credit to kind of um, wait until we got our IRS refund. Not that we didn't have a savings account, we do, but we kind of like borrowed from Peter to pay Paul type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but we had no idea that, okay, you know, one treatment of, you know, a second treatment of chemo could run $2,200. Or, a, you know, just an individual treatment of uh, Lumistine, at, you know, the drive up to Richmond, mm -hmm. uh, the, see the, the vet for $175. And then, you know, the treatment itself, the pay for the pill, you mm -hmm. know, the pay for the, all the blood work they got to do to make sure she's in a position to be able to receive this very powerful chemo treatment. So, I mean, we were just, just dumbfounded. And I would say to any pet parent, you get a pet. Don't ever think that you have enough saved. Be sure to get pet you know, insurance on your dog. Right. I mean, they, you owe them that much. Otherwise, you, know, you might be in a position where you have to put them down for something that you could possibly treat if you had the finances. That's so in conjunction true. with your pet insurance, you could at least you know, help them fight to, 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 to stay alive That's until true. you can get them into remission. So I know our audience probably wants to see Cricket a little bit more in action, and then we'll talk a little about the immune system and the drugs that she, mm. and the meds. We have her in her doggy walker, not that she can't walk with her little lovely Dr. Busby toe grips, but the dress <laughs> is so heavy. And uh, Kenya Lewis with uh, 
uh, I can't remember the name of the company. It was Yorkies. Yes. Um, it is a, I wrote but it her name is Kenya. Kenya Lewis, and I believe that she was with Yorkies. Uh, no, Di dynamic, yorkies.com. She designed her dress for her for her special day because with the pred belly going on, we um, hard, had a hard time finding a really cute outfit. So she kind of went over the top for her with a little bow and her little darling little outfit, which I'm going to end up taking off here shortly because you know, she's not so happy with it. Um, so <laughs> well, can... we also want to see Cricket and how she's handling her challenges yes definitely so i mean i could put her on the floor right now and you could see how she could walk she walks with the dress mm -hmm. bit the weight of the dress um with the in conjunction with the ataxia makes it very difficult for her to walk mm -hmm. so and these even with her little toe grips bless her heart so sometimes she can walk and see Whoops. down she goes um and that's because she can't the ataxia in the brain keeps her from being able to walk normal now we take off the little dress and we just recently put on the Dr. Busby toe grips yeah. and actually talked with Dr. Busby okay. because I was so thrilled that um, it actually helped her be able to not so much walk, but be able to, when she slips down and spays mm -hmm. on the floor, that she can actually get herself back up, which is huge. That gives her some independence from th this little doggy walker because she couldn't get herself up off of tile floors and um, wood flooring. But see, yes. Caper, don't let her fall. Whoop. Grab her tail. <laughs> I grabbed her tail. Whoop, 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 whoop. Come on, Cricket. Hi, honey. Stay here, baby. Hi. So I'll hold on to her for a minute and see if she... And she's excited. She probably wants more with water. Me. What do you think? She says, Mommy wants water. Wants water? The Pred makes them very thirsty. It's one of the side effects. Um, so and they're that's constantly... that's prednisone, right? Mm -hmm. The prednisone. It's one of the side effects of... Um, this drug, but it's life-saving. It keeps her alive. It means mm -hmm. she cannot be without it mm -hmm. at this point. Now, she may not want to stay with me, although she loves me, but I'm, I'm going her. to hand her back to you. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. All right. All right. She's like, okay, I'm fine, Mommy. What a you difference. got that dress off me. <laughs> I'm going to keep the bow on, though, because it's just too cute with it between those big chihuahua ears. She is. And we had her walking around on my kitchen floor and slipping and sliding and these miracle toe grips were amazing just from heaven mm -hmm. because she was able to walk around what happens is her front paws cross, cross each over other from the attacks and mm -hmm. she loses she's it's like falling on your elbow and mm -hmm. it's a continuing issue but she was good in the grass mm -hmm. and she was good on rugs mm -hmm. and basically she hung in there an entire day with two plane rides and the two of us doting over her. So she is a pretty amazing dog. And uh, it's going to be hard for me to let you go back to Virginia. But let's talk about the, the meds, the medications that she's using. Basically, she's, there's two types of chemotherapies that they give uh, GME dogs. And there are immune-mediated medications that they give them. I'm going to try and say them. I'm no medical veterinary or whatever, but I can do my best. Uh, one of them is my, my sophonylate, which uh, I've not given her. Corticosteroids, which is the prednisone. Uh, Azathioprin, cyclosporin modified, which is what she's taking. Cybidine injection, uh, another chemotherapy. Leflunamide, another chemotherapy which she hasn't had, but I'm looking into doing that with her. Um, and then pro carb So those are the, and then, you know, the different immune-mediated medications that neurologists give mm -hmm. dogs with GME. The chemotherapy is Ocystar, which she had immediately when she first got diagnosed, um, where they do it, you know, intravenously to her. And then the other one was Lumistine, which is a very powerful chemo um, that they give, and it's only once a month. And once mm -hmm. she had it, I mean, her urine was radioactive for a week. But that tells you how powerful right. it and really is. And by the is. way, there's costs to remove these radioactive. Right. You you know, when they throw the pill away, they charge you uh, because they have to put it in a special waste mm -hmm. thing. It can't go into, like, your standard landfill for obvious reasons. So when something like this happens to anyone's dog, 
you say to yourself, how could this happen? And one of those topics that we would like to address is what, uh, what we think, or what Margaret has discovered might have been, and possibly is the, the reason, and that is vaccinations. So I'm going to let you address that. And would you like to put Cricket down or, hold, or keep holding her? Well, she's pretty worked up, so I can try and put her in her little... Um, That's fine. You can keep holding her. She might I just want to make sure you're comfortable You're just all well. excited. Um, the primary reason I'm here... You'll be okay. You'll be okay. The primary reason you're here is to bring awareness to other people so that they don't have to go through this and... And the realization is that this whole problem started after a vaccine. And what was the which what particular vaccine was that? Thank you. Um, it was her annual, you know, the standard annual stuff that they give dogs. Um, I don't know exactly which one. I have the list of you know that I brought you, but um, you know, there's a, a quote, and this is why you know I'm here doing this. Is, is I believe the greatest privilege in this world is to use your freedom of speech for those who have no voice. And it was by Ricky Jarvis. Yeah, Ricky Gervais. And it, and it breaks my heart that these vets, um, they're supposed to protect our pets. And they know in their heart, I mean, just like humans, I mean, you don't get revaccinated every single year for childhood diseases. And it's the same thing with dogs. They, they have built-in immunities after they receive these shots. They have the... The, um, what, what is the word, An uh, antibodies? The antibodies, Yeah, sure. built in um, after they receive all these shots. So it's really not necessary um, to, to, to revaccinate them. I mean, I realize the profit margin might be cut for them, but, you know, uh, excuse me, they're there to protect mm -hmm. and, 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 and take care of our dogs. I mean, this is the veterinarian oath. Being admitted to the profession of veterinary medicine, I solemnly swear to use my scientific knowledge and skills for the benefit of society through the protection of animal health and welfare, the prevention and relief of animal suffering, not to create it, um, the conservation of animal resources, the promotion of public health, and the advancement of medical knowledge. I will practice my profession consist conscientiously with dignity and in keeping with the principles of the veterinary medical ethics. I accept as a lifelong obligation the continual improvement of my profession, professional knowledge, I correct me, and competence. Okay, well, if you know that this might be causing immune-mediated diseases in our dogs, mm -hmm. okay. then um, why would you want to risk that? And so pet parents need to stop thinking that their vets know everything because uh, I found that they don't. I mean, they can't even diagnose an immune-mediated disease. I, I cringe at the thought of thinking how many pets have died undiagnosed um, after vaccines because their pet parents had no idea and the vet had no idea mm -hmm. that they were doing this. And, and I'm not saying that all vets are bad. I'm, I've met some really wonderful vets, especially after Creek got sick, but... You know, there's a lot of vets out there that, you know, I, I, I realize the almighty dollar is the god, in, you know, but it, it, but to a lot of people, but it shouldn't be. These, these pets are precious. They have their own little souls. They're, they, they love you unconditionally. I, I find them more loyal to me than any human being ever has been, just because they're just, it's their nature. They're just really, I think, a gift from God because of the way they are. Um, you can get a, a, a tighter test before you do any vaccines. It, uh, Dr. Becker was, mentions at vaccine check for 20 bucks. And that's Dr. Karen Becker. Dr. Karen Becker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, you know, I, I know some vets will charge an arm and leg, but you don't have to. You go through vaccine check yourself and, and get a tighter test. Um, you have to consider the risks and the rewards. You know, you can say no to your vet. Uh, and don't feel guilty. I remember my vet going, oh, you're such a good pet parent. Every single year you give her her shots, you know, the shots of a 125-pound dog to a 5-pound chihuahua. That's like giving an adult size shot to an infant. I mean, think about it. Think about when you got your shots. Did you get them every single year after you, you grew up? You don't need to do this. They are built with a lifelong immunity. I mean, um, 
Dr. Becker's uh, all kinds of articles regarding it. Don't take my word for it. Do your research. Um, the, the voices against it are Dr. Ronald Schultz, doc, Dr. Richard Pickham, Dr. Dodds, uh, Dana Scott with Dog Naturally Mag Magazine. I mean, she is an advocate mm -hmm. of um, and a great resource for helping you keep your pets, you know, healthy. Um, Dog Naturally Magazine, Dana Scott. I, you know, I take my hat off to her. I, God, I wish I'd read her articles before. I never would have revaccinated Cricket ever had I known that I would be putting her at health and create suffering for this little dog. I mean, there's just something innately wrong about this. And it needs to change. The laws need to change. I mean, there's commercial flea and tick medicines on the market that they know are killing these dogs, creating immune diseases in these dogs. These chemicals are not healthy for these dogs. Well, what I think might also be the case is not all veter vets see this type of problem. Mm -mm. So, Or if is... they do... They don't even know what they're looking at. That's the sad thing about it. Go back to school then. Get get up to date on your CNS signs and symptoms because, you know, people are depending on you. They're paying you good money to take care of their pets. You need to do what you need to do to help us. Why, why would we pay you money for, to, 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 to make them sick or not be able to diagnose them? Learn what you need to learn. If I can learn it, I'm a mortgage underwriter. I have nothing to do with any kind of veterinary. But I had to have a crash course to save my dog. And it shouldn't have had to be that way, Roberta. It should, I shouldn't have had to go to the late nights research and looking into all of this stuff. No, but it drove you to start this website. And I want you to tell our audience where to reach you so that they can get some information. Because you are so passionate. And this isn't just because you're looking to make some money out of this. You are wanting to bring the information out so other people don't have to go through as much trouble as you have. And it's, it's heartbreaking. Uh, you know, Cricket is just the most precious little dog I think I'll ever meet, honestly, because I see how much she is fighting. And she's put up with us for a couple of days now. So we want to help her. We want to help he, all of the other dogs that need her, this type of help. So tell our audience how to get you. You can find me at PetParentsFightingGME.Ning.com. This is a site that I created um, for, just to benefit not, not just dogs that are suffering GME, but also, you know, healthy, uh, pet parents have healthy dogs. You need to be able to learn the signs and symptoms. Um, there's a lot of good holistic uh, options in there that you can look into to help keep your dog healthy. I mean, I've had to change Cricket's diet. Um, Dr. Becker, Dr. Karen Becker recommended me to go ahead and give her hormone-free meat, which I have to cook. Obviously, you can't give raw uh, I meat. <laughs> yeah, I know you made it for me the other yeah. night. Um, you have to give them uh, a good meat because they are, after all, dogs, um, and uh, hormone-free. You cook it. She can't have it raw because of, of her immune system being crashed down to the ground. But um, So I use that with Honest Kitchen. I mix it up. It's a good recovery diet, and it's, you know, helping to keep her strong so mm -hmm. she can fight this disease. I, I don't know how long, you know, it's, it's, it's a very life-threatening disease. I don't know how long she'll be on this earth, so I'm going to give her the best options that I can to help her fight, let her little body work towards fighting against mm -hmm. this disease with obviously the conventional medications that she is required to take to keep her alive I on know. a monthly basis. I know. Tell everyone what you have to do in the morning to get started with Cricket, what your process is. First thing in the morning, um, there's a supplement that I give her. It's called um, Nutramex Denarurin Tablets, and it's an antioxidant, um, and it protects her liver from the prednisone. Mm -hmm. um, because the, the prednisone can start destroying the dog's liver on a long-term basis, especially at the high, higher doses. Now, once I can get her down to a low floor dose, then that would be different, but I'd still probably keep her on it just because it's prednisone. Mm -hmm. um, I also give her organic milk thistle um, in the evening. Again, mm -hmm. that protects her liver. It helps her liver function. Um, that's a supplement. I've also got her on Charlotte's Web Hemp Oil. 
and I do that um, because she did have one seizure. Uh, dogs with GME, uh, if they haven't had seizures, will eventually start having seizures. Mm -hmm. um, I figure if it can work for infants and save their lives, it could work for Cricket and other dogs uh, with GME are, are on it now. It was recommended to me by a friend. Um, and it is uh, the, the hemp oil extract, and it does helps with migraines, inflammation, and seizures. And so she hasn't had a seizure since. And I just, you know, put a couple of drops in her dog food, and she just really laps helps. it right up. Um, I, I give her Ultra Neuro Recovery by American Biologics. It's a nerve tissue health uh, supplement that Dr. Re uh, Karen Becker recommended. Mm -hmm. um, and I give that to her every day. She's been on it for several months. Um, Maxi Omega-3 oil for dogs. Dogs need a lot of omega-3, 6 and 9. It also has A and D and E and biotin in it. I give her Dr. McCullough krill oil. It's for brain and nerve function, mm -hmm. and it's from the fish that are up in the colder waters. So that's really, really good for their, their brain. Now, if you're listening to this long list of supplements and medications, this could make you pretty exhausted, even before the day begins. Not to mention the little toe grips mm -hmm. from Dr. Busby to help this little dog, Cricket, to be able to stabilize herself on the ground. I mean, honestly, for you to come all the way from Virginia with Cricket to let our audience know, let our audience know what this really means in the flesh it is significant, and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart to just be here and spread the word so that people can stop the disease much more quickly because if you notice a symptom and you get help, it can be a life or death type of a decision. Yeah, and I, I want to thank, you know, what got started was I reached out to a lady that runs a, a website for Chihuahuas. Her name is Kathy Bendivis. Yes. And she runs ilovemychi.com, and I used to post on there through Facebook, please stop vaccinating your dogs, look at my cricket, look at my cricket. So she picked it up, and bless her heart, she did the first article. Um, and then she took the podcast that you and I did, and she placed it right on her ilovemychi.com. She feels so passionately about it mm -hmm. to share it with all her 100-plus members because chihuahuas are a very popular breed of dog. They are. Um, and she did that with no financial gain. And then I'm having a uh, hosting a pet expo on GME in, at, in Virginia Beach. And she, bless her heart, has volunteered two days of her time just to help me spread awareness mm -hmm. to pet parents because toy breeds especially are at huge risk because of the size of the vaccines alone. I mean, before you even mm -hmm. get into whether or not it's really even necessary, mm -hmm. I just, they don't dose it down. Well, the message is loud and clear, and I think that everyone who's watching our show will never forget Cricket, and they'll never forget you, Margaret Diddy, for all the work you're doing, and I hope that they will check out your website, and I hope that oh, Where we they'll have get, these. Um, they'll get a bumper sticker true. to spread this awareness. Is, we have a bumper sticker here. We've got. And we're, we have these bracelets. Yes, we do. We have a brochure that I use in um, that you can download. Um, and when you're going through, like, say, a drive through or whatever, um, I just I ask the question, do you have a dog? Most often times, yes, I do. What? Oh, do you have a toy breed especially? Oh, yes, I do. Well, can you take these little um, brochures and put them in your lunchroom? No problem. They'll even post for pictures. Everybody loves their dog. People want to protect them. Does. There's a reason that they do. Enormous love for their pets. So, Margaret, we are going to end right here with a plea for our audience to help us bring some awareness and we'll be getting some brochures out there, too. So thank you so much for being on Dog Health News. Roberta. And thank you, Cricket. Here, I'm going to her hold GME you. her champion. Oh, yes, this little dog. And this is Roberta Chaitis with Dog Health News. Please take care of your dogs, and we'll be back with another show soon. Okay.